Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this guide on how to counter every hero in Deadlock. We are going to go through what item choices to buy, how to play the laning stage, and positioning tips for each hero, and how to just get better at certain matchups. This might help you if you have certain heroes you're struggling with, or if you just want to learn more about the game in general. So we're going to categorize the items into three categories. One are items that silence the enemy so silence basically means that it stops you from using abilities not items in slowing hex it also stops them from using any movement based items and abilities and then silencer that also adds a silence to your weapons curse is the super duper version of silence that just stops you from doing anything interrupt silence disarm and prevents item usage and unstoppable is basically the opposite you pop unstoppable to not get silenced or stunned or cursed or anything. Basically, unstoppable and curse are two items that uh, you can almost always buy, depending on how much crowd control there is. So I'm not going to mention unstoppable and curse for every hero, unless it's like especially applicable for one type of hero. And then next up, we have healing reduction. There are currently three items that do healing reduction. They are heal bane, decay and toxic bullets. Now one thing to have in mind here is that healing reduction is multiplicative and it's not additive, meaning that even though you have 40 plus 65%, that is not 105% reduction, it is slightly less. Meaning that there is a world where you wanna buy all three and that would total the healing reduction to about 90%. So if you're playing against Shiv and Abrams, for instance, all of these are extremely good. Healing Booster is also the only item in the game that actually reduces the effectiveness of Healing Reduction. So you can call it then Healing Reduction Resistance. <laughs> and then finally, we have what I call Defensive Utilities. So these are items that will help protect you from certain abilities and heroes. You have Debuff Remover that can completely remove any negative debuff on you. You have Metal Skin that makes you immune to bullets. You have Reactive Barrier that gives you a bullet and spirit shield when you get crowd control. You have Return Fire. Anyway, so we're gonna start with Abrams. Now Abrams has a lot of stuns in his toolkit. He has an ult that stuns. He has a shoulder charge that also stuns. And not only that, but he also has a lot of healing. First of all, his Infernal Resilience when maxed up, it regenerates 25% of his health over time, meaning that anti-heal items are extremely good. Because he also can pin you with shoulder charge and seismic impact, it means that reactive barrier also increases in value. And it's very common for Abrams to build melee items because he has so many gap closing tools, which also means that reactive barrier helps a lot. Because when you're in a melee fight, if you get parried, and you get stunned, it actually procs reactive barrier as well. So against Abrams, it is mainly anti-heal and reactive barrier. You have to bear in mind that Abrams does have a shotgun, meaning that he does not do a lot of damage far away. So this could be a good hero to try to stay far away from. But also bear in mind that the further away you are in the laning stage, the harder it is to last hit because all the shotgun characters in this game are really good at last hitting orbs. But just try to find ways to harass him and force him to play more passively, uh, because if an Abrams is full HP and plays very aggressively, it's very hard to lay in against him. And his Siphon Life, this one also heals him. So basically, anti-heal plus reactive barrier is great against Abrams. Another thing to say is also because he has such a high health pool, some of these items also do percentage-based damage. So you notice that Decay not only reduces the healing reduction, but also does a 3.1% per second heal bleed damage over time. The same goes for Toxic Bullets. So these are great items, not only for the healing reduction, but also because they will do more damage to a higher health pool character. All right, next up we have Bebop. Now, as you probably know, Bebop is my favorite character, so it does hurt me a little bit that I need to explain to you guys how to counter Bebop, but there are quite a few things you can do. First of all, a lot of people don't know this, but the hook is considered a movement impairing ability. So if you look here at Reactive Barrier, it actually says that when you are movement locked, it deploys the bullet and spirit shield. So Reactive Barrier has a 32 second cooldown, meaning that you can quite possibly stay in the laning stage and always have Reactive Barrier up whenever you get hooked. 
So let's look at Bebop's hook cooldown here before it's upgraded. It is 23 seconds, meaning that you have about a nine second window where you gotta be extra careful before your reactive barrier comes back. But reactive barrier is great against Bebop because whenever he hooks you, you're gonna take a lot of damage. And the other problem is that because you can't, you're not in control of your character while you're being hooked, uh, reactive barrier will be better than using an active defensive ability in case you get bursted down before you're able to click any buttons. Another thing that's really good, especially against Bomb Bebop, is debuff remover. So this is another thing some people don't know. Debuff remover works against bombs. Because the bombs are considered a debuff, a three second debuff, you can completely negate the bomb damage with debuff remover. Which is also why I, a lot of the time, I end up buying Phantom Strike or Warp Stone and put the bombs on myself. But yeah, definitely, you'll notice that when there's a bebop in your game with a lot of bomb damage, it's very common to buy debuff remover. Other than that, it goes without saying that if he has a lot of spirit damage, you build spirit armor, and if he has a lot of bullet damage, you build bullet armor. And that goes also for any hero, so I'm not really going to go into that. If the bebop is more focused on gun damage, there's no point in buying a debuff remover because the bomb is only going to be a small portion of the damage. But the reactive barrier is basically always good against him. Another thing is that when you maxed his ult, he has 100% lifesteal. So have that in mind, that healing reduction can also be really great against Bebop if you're gonna try to man up. But in general, there are very few heroes that can man up with the Hyper Beam if you have the same amount of souls, so I might just recommend not doing that. Also, if you notice that the Bebop is playing ult build, he usually buys Majestic Leap or Magic Carpet and he flies up in air. And then items like Knockdown, can also be really good. And I forgot to show you that item earlier, but Knockdown is an item that knocks them down and stuns them after two seconds delay, which interrupts his ult and puts him back into the ground. Dynamo. Dynamo is very annoying to play against. He has Quantum Entanglement, which makes him teleport a short distance. He takes his enemies with him and he can use that to dodge a lot of damage, he has kinetic pulse that stuns and knocks people up in the air, and he has the most powerful ult in the game. The cool thing about his ult is that the only thing that counters singularity in the entire game is unstoppable, but only if you cast her unstoppable first, meaning that you have to predict when he's about to do it. This is the only way that you can be in a dynamo ult and not get stunned. So that's just something to have in mind. A reactive barrier will also protect you, but usually it's not enough for a dynamo ult, so not necessarily the biggest counter. I will say though, this is an, a hero that Silence Cliff is very good against because not only can he teleport out, but he also has a really strong heal. Also another hero where healing reduction can be good because he can also heal everybody around him. So you can also see that he heals everybody around him and when it's maxed out, he can fully move and use abilities and also heal for 4% of max health per second. Meaning also that any target you hit with anti-heal will also take less effects from this. His ult can win your entire game. So make sure that if you know Dynamo has ult by looking at the top and looking at if he has his ult charge ready or if he has a refresher, spread out. Don't play on top of each other. You are gonna get ulted and it's gonna suck. Grey Talon. Most Grey Talons, they build very heavy spirit damage. Extremely bursty, charge shot can do a lot of damage. Uh, Guided Owl can do a lot of damage as well. It's becoming more and more common to get a few points in charge shot and then max her Owl and try to start stacking spirit power, meaning that he just has extremely high spirit damage burst early game. Some people build Gun Talon too, but I don't think that's actually that strong. In most cases, the easiest way to counter Grey Talon is to get spirit armor, but also he is very weak if you get to stay on top of him. So getting knocked down to and knock him out of the sky because he has rain of arrows and just staying on top of him in general so he doesn't get to just free cast a charge shot makes him pretty weak. Great talent works best when he plays in the background. So this is also a positioning issue. Another thing is that when Great Talon uses ult, you can hear this like extremely annoying owl screech and you should always tell your teammates when you know when you hear him casting his ult because if someone's low health you might give them a few extra seconds to be able to hide from that owl haze all right so 
Haze is very strong in this meta. A lot of people are raging because this is one of those press for win game situations. Bullet Dance gets extremely strong in the late game. Haze is one of those heroes where it's extremely common to buy three specific items to make your ult powerful. So the first item you buy is Ricochet, which makes all the bullets bounce around to nearby targets. Then you buy Silencer, so all those bullets also apply silence. And then finally you buy Unstoppable so no one can interrupt you while you're ulting. These three items makes Haze extremely hard to play against, but there are a few counters you can do. First of all, you have Ethereal Shift, which I probably should have mentioned in the intro, by the way, because this is just a very good item at iframing, uh, dodging abilities. You're absolutely immune and untargetable for, for any type of damage for 3.5 seconds, and it also reloads you. But there is an even better counter against Haze, and that is Metal Skin. Metal Skin makes you immune to bullets and melee attacks for 3.5 seconds, meaning that you can stand inside the Haze ult and use your abilities and move around and shoot. But not only that, because Silencer applies the silence effect to your bullets, it actually means that when you are using Metal Skin, you don't get silenced either. So Metal Skin is the item to buy if you're struggling against a Haze. And if you really want to and you're like struggling with getting away, you can either get something like a Warp Stone, which also will give you some bullet resist, or you can chain your Metal Skin into an Ethereal Shift, because Haze's ult will normally last longer than those defensive abilities, but at least you'll have some time to move around and cast. Another thing is that Sleep Dagger is a crowd control effect, meaning that this is another hero you can counter with the reactive barrier. Because when you're in a laning stage against Haze, what they usually do is they stealth in, they will Sleep Dagger you, and then they'll try to chain like a heavy melee into an ult, or just like do a lot of poke damage in general. But the Sleep Dagger almost has the same length of a cooldown as a reactive barrier has and until you upgrade it. Uh, this is another hero that it's very popular to buy reactive barrier against. You could also consider buying return fire if you want to. It's not necessarily a direct counter, but she does have a lot of bullet damage. So there is a world where uh, return fire can uh, help you against haste. Infernus. Infernus has a very interesting toolkit where he excels when he's able to apply his, his dots damage over time on a lot of targets. He usually gets Ricochet, he usually gets Leech, and he, he just flame dashes around and tries to apply Afterburn on all his targets. He also always buys Toxic Bullets. It's pretty much a core item on any Infernus build because it synergizes so well with his Afterburn. So what does this mean? Well, first of all, it means that he will always put a lot of debuffs on you. So debuff remover by default is a good item to consider. Another thing is that he always gets extreme amounts of Spirit Lifesteal. You almost always buy Soul Shredder bullets. You almost always buy Spirit Lifesteal and most of the time also Leech. So this means that the Holy Trinity of uh, Anti-Heal is definitely great against him. Decay, Healbane, Toxic Bullets are all good against uh, Infernus. Another interesting thing about using a debuff remover that sometimes people forget is also that if you remove his debuffs from you, he also stops healing because his healing comes from his debuffs doing damage to you. So by having debuff remover, you're actually also reducing his amount of survivability. And that is something that is easy to forget. He can also not use flame dash if you slowing hex. So this item is also very good against Infernus, but it's important to remember that if you cast this on him before he flame dashes, he cannot move for three seconds. I guess it's also worth mentioning that his ult stuns, so you can get reactive barrier against Infernus too, but I don't think it's as good as against some other heroes. All right, and then we have Ivy. I hate this hero, I'm sorry, but I just think this hero is too strong. This stone form, they just took every, every ability and they put it in one ability. It stuns and it heals, it makes you immune. It's, it's just so good. And because you can replicate healing with nearby targets, it also means that when you're using stone form, you can also heal your teammates. Ivy is just damn strong. Stone form is stunning, obviously means that reactive barrier works. It also means that anti-healing is pretty good against Ivy. But I think in general, you wanna get a silence for Ivy for sure. Silence Glyph is gonna help 
you deal with the, her going immune. It's also gonna stop Ivy from just flying away with ult because her airdrop ult is really strong. She has a 1.3 second cast time, I believe, before she flies away. So being able to stop her from flying away also is huge. And this, this, this gargoyle demon is just annoying to deal with. So yeah, definitely consider getting silence for Ivy, for sure. Other than that, most Ivy builds are very yeah. bullet damage focused. So you can also think about return fire and definitely bullet armor if she gets far ahead. A lot of Ivy players buy items like heroic aura and siphon bullets because the idea is that because you can fly away with your ult, you're really good at split pushing. So these items are gonna help you get that 1v1 sustain. Because when you're split pushing, it's very common that you end up in a 1v1 situation. Uh, yeah, so if you see that Ivy builds tons of healing, obviously buy more healing reduction. Other than that, I just think this hero is too strong. Kelvin, speaking of strong heroes, uh, Kelvin has been nerfed like a gazillion times, but he's just still very strong. Right now, it's actually pretty common to play gun Kelvin, which is pretty new. He always used to be like omega strong with the beam. And there's also quite a lot of like frost grenade builds coming up. One thing that is really important to buy with Kel against Kelvin is actually Endring Speed because Endring Speed has a 40% movement slow resist. So because a lot of items in Kelvin's toolkit slows, his frost grenade slows you, his ice beam slows you, this item helps a lot against Kelvin. Um, another thing to mention is that his ult gives tons of health regen and scales with spirit, meaning that anti-heal is always gonna be great against him. Other than that, his entire toolkit is focused around spirit damage and also lowers your fire rate. Against Kelvin, it is very important to identify what kind of build he goes for. If he focuses on a frost grenade build with echo shard and stuff, he also will heal a ton of health because frost grenade heals the damage it does and it scales with spirit. If you get a lot of spirit and you focus on frost grenade, you can heal a lot. And some people also uh, go for the Arctic Beam build and they buy Spirit Lifesteal. So anti-heal against Kelvin is just always going to be good because it's very common for Kelvins to just use the Frozen Shelter as a way to heal yourself back up to max. Kelvin is also just really hard to catch because of Ice Path. He moves extremely fast and he flies up in the skies and stuff. So he can definitely also be a good hero to use Knockdown on or Slowing Hex stuff like that to make him not just zoom around. Lady Geist. Lady Geist isn't really that popular these days, but all of her abilities are based around using your health for damage and then healing it back up. Even the ult is considered a heal, even though it just says swaps health levels, it's actually considered a heal. So a lot of anti-heal is good against Lady Geist. Another thing, that is pretty good against Geist is actually the interaction with shields. So think about it this way, right? Okay, it says swaps health levels with an enemy target. So let's say that you have a 30% health, right? Then, then she swaps health. Now let's say that she has 30% health and then she swaps with you and you're full health. If you have shields, those shields will still work, which means that if you think about it, Items like Enchanter's Barrier and Combat Barrier are actually great against Geist because your effective health will be much higher than the health she swaps with you. So let's say you have a thousand health, right? And she has 300 and then she swaps you and then now you have 300 and she has a thousand. But because you have Combat Barrier and Enchanter's Barrier and maybe a few of these basic items that also gives you bullet shields, your effective health can be 600, 700, 800, even after you're swapped, because the health swap works on the actual health and not the shields. But in general, anti-heal is great against Lady Geist. Now, I forgot to mention also the positioning part where the range of soul exchange is very low, which is why Lady Geist usually buys warp stone. So always pay attention to if Lady Geist is full health or not, and if she has warp stone because she needs to go extremely close to swap health with you. So if Geist is low, just stay far away. Lash. Lash has a lot of mobility. So the first absolute counter is slowing Hex. Slowing Hex stops him from using Grapple and Grapple is like the entire reason why Lash can fly around and go crazy. Another thing is that 
you can buy reactive barrier because Lash has these one shot combos where he picks you up in the air, he tosses you into the ground and then you get ground striked and before you're able to perform an action. So in other words, reactive barrier will be great against Lash because it increases your effective health against the one shot mechanic. So you're able to at least have a chance to get away. Another thing is also that his flog late game heals quite a lot. So you should consider having anti-heal, but this is also one of those where it depends on what build uh, he's going for. You can see if he has healing booster, you can see if he has extra spirit lifesteal. Like the, the last build that I have in game has a lot of spirit lifesteal, so anti-heal would be good against him. But other than that, it's mostly stuff like spirit armor and reactive barrier. Knockdown can also be good against Lash. Also, one thing that is really good to do on Lash is that whenever the enemy is pushing the walker, Lash will try to fly above and toss them into the walker stun and then chain his ground strike right after the walker stun. So whenever you're pushing a walker, always check if the Lash on the enemy team has his ult and try to predict that that's what he's gonna do because that's just an extremely strong play. All right, mech guineas. There's two very common builds. One is just stacking spirit and spamming turrets with the like echo shard and stuff or ult. And the other one is going really ham on the gun builds. The thing about guineas is that she usually excels in solo lanes and split pushing. And the most common playstyle with McGuinness is to just run at the walker and start hitting it and then die and then come back and keep running at the walker until it dies. And if, if McKinney's split pushing powers isn't dealt with, then you can suddenly lose your base quite quickly. And that's very advantageous for them because they will also be getting extra flex slots. So what can you do? McKinney's has a very strong heal. You can go for anti-heal to make the, that heal worse, but the easier choice is usually to position yourself in a way where McKinney's is forced to run out of her heal. So whenever you're dueling at McKinney's, because McKinney's is a hero, that you will be 1v1ing a lot because she does a lot of split pushes. So any hero that split pushes has to be good at 1v1s because a lot of the time the team can't prioritize sending multiple heroes to defend one lane just because one hero is split pushing it. Um, so the first thing you wanna try to do is to bait her into using her heal and then bait her into moving out of it. Another thing is that most McGinney's players play the gun builds, which are very focused on uh, bullet damage and healing so heroic aura and siphon bullets and so on so anti-heal is always going to be good as well mcginnis by the way only starts with two stamina so that is also something to have in mind that unless she pops fleet foot and stuff and runs away she probably will have problems with dashing away multiple times so that is also something to have in mind I guess just in general, when you're playing as McGinnis, she really wants you to run into her because she can put down turrets and heals and stuff, and then she can wall you off. So just being weary of that is really important. I mean, if you play in close quarters, she can definitely use her wall to like outplay you and you'll kind of be stuck. And she has a lot of sustain because her gun charges up and does a lot of damage. So I think baiting out abilities against McGinnis is really good. Metal Skin is also good against McGinnis because her gun does a lot of damage and of course bullet armor too. Next up we have Mo and Krillithy. Probably one of the most hated heroes in the game. The reason why Mo and Krill is extremely hated is because of his ultimate that makes you stun someone for 2.75 seconds and then you upgrade it and then it's 3.5 seconds. And then you buy a superior duration and then it's over 4 seconds and then it's just... <laughs> It's just not a good time. Whenever you get comboed by Mo and Krill, it feels really bad. And also he gets permanent health whenever he, someone dies in the Mo and Krill ult. Another thing to notice is that he has the biggest burst heal in the laning stage. I don't know if you guys have laned a lot against a Mo and Krill, but he will sometimes just burrow up to you and then he presses his scorn. And because it has two times hero damage to heal as well, it's even stronger against heroes. And it also has damage to heal, meaning that if you get Mystic Burst, it increases his healing even more. So there are situations where Mo and Krill just burrows up to you. He's on 20%, he presses his 
score and then it heals him up to max. So definitely consider getting healing reduction against Mo and Krill. Uh, again, like I mentioned previously, most healing reduction items also do percentage-based damage over time. So because Mo and Krill is a naturally tanky hero with high health pool, not only because his ults gives him permanent health, but you usually buy a lot of tanky health items on him. Toxic bullets and decay is just really, really good. Another thing that's good is reactive barrier, because when he combos you, you literally cannot move, you cannot press anything. So having an item that automatically activates can help saving you from dying to the combo. So the combo is mainly spirit damage, as you can see here. So it's important to double check. So for instance, if you look at the reactive barrier, you see that it gives a 400 bullet shield and 200 spirit shield. So the combo damage itself is mostly mitigated until he gets a lot more damage. And the bullet shield is more for the fact that Moe and Krill usually excels when he's playing with another teammate. So the bullet shield will basically stop other players from shooting you because you're stun locked. So yeah, reactive barrier is just a great counter to Moe and Krill. All right, next up we have Paradox. Paradox has an ult with extremely low cooldown. It is under 30 seconds when it's maxed and buffed up with items and stuff. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, Reactive Barrier is definitely, this is definitely another hero where Reactive Barrier works. In terms of countering Paradox, I think it's not necessarily as much about items, but rather about positioning. So one thing that Paradox usually does is that they pop Kinetic Carbine and then they sprint forward because it increases your movement speed. And then when they stun someone with the Kinetic Carbine, they instantly pop their Paradoxical Swap so you switch positions. So this is like how this paradox combo works. And they also put down their time wall between because when you go through the time wall, you take 10% health damage and you get silenced when it's maxed. Yeah, paradox is like a position four in Dota. That's very true. The best counter to paradox is not necessarily in the items themselves, but in using audio cues because before she swaps, she always uses kinetic carbine first and it makes a very loud tick tock, tick tock sound. So when you hear the tickety tockety, you know that Paradox is looking for a swap and you just want to hide to make sure. The hero kind of plays like Vengeful Spirit in Dota. Yeah, she doesn't have like tons of healing. There is like, there is spell lifesteal on the ult, but it doesn't do like shit tons of damage or anything. Paradox is a very high skill cap hero and she's not that strong in lower MMR. But yeah, mainly the counter to Paradox is positioning. And please do not run through the wall. It sucks. All right, next up we have Pocket. I'm just gonna say it right now. This hero is very hard to deal with. When you play against Pocket, you need a few things. First of all, always buy Silence Cliff. Silence Cliff is great against Pocket because Pocket is a slippery salmon. He uses his flying cloak to go away. He uses Enchanter Satchel and he's just so annoying to deal with. He usually buys Majestic Leap and Warp Stone. So this is one of those heroes that getting anything to lock him down is great. Another item that is great against Pocket is Debuff Remover because he has an extremely strong ult that puts an 18 second debuff on you that reduces your healing by 60% and you start just Ticking down, ticking down, ticking down. So it's almost mandatory to buy debuff remover against pocket, or you'll have to run back to base and wait until it runs out. Debuff reducer, I forgot to mention this earlier, is like a light version of the other one. And it definitely, it, it will shorten the pocket ult with about like five to six seconds. So that's great. But this is just like infinitely stronger. For those of you who come from Dota, Pocket's playstyle is exactly the same as Puck. That's why a lot of people will call him Pocket. But yeah, this guy is just extremely annoying to deal with. His barrage does a lot of poke damage in the laning stage and it makes his forward momentum continue while he uses it. So sometimes he will like jump off the zip line and then barrage and he will just float forward. But here's the thing, he's very exposed when he uses Barrage. So if you play heroes like Paradox or Bebop, it can be pretty easy to hook them out of the Barrage because they're kind of floating, just like floating there in like a specific direction. Another thing to have in mind with Pocket is that he starts with minus 15 spirit resistance. So this guy is actually extra weak against spirit damage. So just something to have in mind that he's pretty weak to spirit damage. 
But getting a silence glyph or even a curse on Pocket to stop him from going away is great. Because silence glyph is great to stop his cloak and satchel. But because it's so common to buy Warp Stone and Majestic Leap and Ethereal Shift, you might need curse as well. All right, seven. So against seven, especially if he plays old build, always buy knockdown. Knockdown just counters his entire old build until he gets unstoppable. Seven also runs very fast. So that's just something to bear in mind because if you notice here, there's like a, this little star here. What this star means that his movement speed scales with spirits. And uh, same with Grey Talon. I forgot to mention that earlier, but he also has movement speed that scales with spirit. So yeah, Knockdown is great against Seven to stop his Storm Cloud because I'm sure a lot of you have been in a game where Seven is just like flying over the base and killing four people with his Storm Cloud. And you're like, oh my God, it's so broken. But you can literally buy one 3k item and he can just not do that of course when you buy knockdown you force him to buy unstoppable but that's kind of just how it works the thing about seven when he ults is that he's floating in the sky and he's completely still so if you play bebop and you have your maxed ult you can easily nuke him down with your laser because you have a hundred percent lifesteal so you can actually tank it um i also sometimes use hook to hook seven's ult into like a enclosed space so it gives my teammates more space to fight in because he usually ults up in the sky where he will hit everything so if you hook him into an enclosed space then only you are taking damage from it so bebop is actually pretty good at dealing with seven in the late game uh, once you have your beam maxed i usually just hook him in and then i double bomb him or i just channel my ult in. another thing is that Right now, it's very common to play a very, very, very cringe build called Double Stun 7. So you buy Echo Shard and then you place two static charges on a target. And then the idea is that they are going to run away and run back into your team. And then you'll just chain stun multiple targets. Meaning that reactive barrier is once again going to be great. Static Charge has around a 23 second cooldown when you upgrade it. So yeah, Reactive Barrier can definitely save you from disaster when uh, playing against 7. Most of 7 damage is actually surprisingly uh, spirit. So even when you play carry 7, you still go for a lot of spirit and spirit lifesteal. So this is also another hero that anti-heal is going to be good. Also, by the way, guys, just to mention it, like anti-heal items are better than you think, okay? Like there's almost never a bad game to buy anti-heal. I just feel like a lot of people, me included, are pretty greedy to follow my build. I want to like get my next item in my core build. So I refuse to buy these anti-heal items. But they are so strong. And especially considering the fact that both Decay and Toxic Bullets also deals percentage based damage. While Healbane also heals you after you get a kill. There's a lot more utility to those items too. Other than ju just the actual healing reduction which I think people forget a lot of the time, and that's why they're not bought enough. Yeah, you can also buy slowing Hex against 7 because it runs so fast, but that's more like a soft counter. All right, so then we have Shiv. Shiv is also one of the most hated heroes because he was so strong on release, and then they nerfed him like five times, and he still is quite strong. Against Shiv, it's just a no-brainer. Just buy as much anti-heal as you can. His entire toolkit is pretty much designed to be a sustained tank, he has a dagger that does damage over time and with spirit lifesteal that means that it heals you over time. He also has bloodletting which means that a percentage of the damage he takes turns into damage over time meaning that he's really hard to burst down. So a lot of anti-heal and I know I'm repeating myself but I gotta tell you guys to buy more anti-heal. Yeah that's actually pretty much it. You'd be surprised how He's not necessarily as broken as you think he was when he has 90% reduction to his healing. Suddenly he dies. In the laning stage against Shiv, one thing to have in mind, by the way, is that his knife stacks. So if he hits it with a knife, try to hide until the dagger runs out so he can't reapply it and increase the damage he does to you. Yeah, another thing to remember, this is also a soft counter, but when you max your slice and dice, it reduces the cooldown by two seconds per enemy hero hit. Meaning that if you're fighting Shiv in a narrow alleyway, he can spam his slice and dice back and forth. And if he has spirit lifesteal, he's going to heal extremely fast. So 
have in mind, like hover over his abilities, check if he's maxed out his slice and dice or not, and avoid fighting him in narrow alleyways together with your teammates because he's just gonna slice and dice spam. And Shiv's usually almost always by heal bane because his ult has a killing blow execute. So it uh, synergizes really well with a heal bane because as soon as you kill them, it also heals you for 350. So yeah, anti-heal by anti-heal. And he's gonna have a lot of health. So anti-heal items also have percentage-based bleed by anti-heal. Vindicta. Vindicta recently got a buff, which made her extremely annoying to play against. She has much more air control when flying now. And she also shares souls with her teammates, meaning that she's just a really good pick right now. Uh, to deal with Vinicta, you need knockdown. You really need knockdown. I can't stress this enough how important it is to crowd control Vinicta because if she gets to just fly around in the background, you're gonna struggle a lot in the game. Make sure you check if she's going for a spirit build or a bullet damage build, because that can change a lot how you itemize against her because she can have a lot of burst damage and her ult gives bonus souls as well. So you don't want to get last hit by her ult because then you're just feeding souls to the enemy. But mainly, just like with Grey Talon, because she has an ability that makes her fly, knockdown is an extremely high priority. Another thing that is kind of a soft counter is Phantom Strike because you can jump up against her and fight her in the air. But yeah, by knockdown. Vindicta sucks. Okay, then we have Viscous. This damn green blob. I have a v personal vendetta against Viscous because his cube stops me from building bomb stacks with Bebop. It's very annoying. So if you're struggling with good Bebops, then definitely Viscous can stop a lot of that. He can toss you around a lot. Reactive barrier can definitely save your ass. It will uh, put the shield on when you get stunned by the goo ball. Okay, so reactive barrier isn't that great against Viscous then because his ult is on a much longer cooldown. This is another hero where Silence, Glyph, and Curse just is really strong. He is really tricky to deal with. He can pop his goo ball to run away. He can cube some even by Echo Shard to cube again. His cube does also heal him quite a bit, but I think in general, because he's such a slippery hero, it's kind of like playing against Pocket. You really want to get some sort of like silence or curse. Okay, next up we have Warden. The most common build to play a Warden these days is the uh, movement speed one, where he kind of just like runs you down and he will catch up to almost anyone because he gets a movement speed from willpower that stacks at all other movement items. So when you play against a good warden it's pretty common for them to use items like fortitude that gives movement speed enduring speed and heroic aura and fleet foot so because he has so much movement speed he sometimes can be hard to deal with but one thing that is pretty important is that his ult gives a very apparent audio cue when he's about to cast it and the casting time is 2.2 seconds where he's completely still he does have increased bullet resistance when he casts it. They just changed that actually. But whenever you hear him casting that ult, you need to just get away or you need to hide. That is the best counter against Warden. Because you cannot man fight him while last hand is in front of him in most cases, unless you're really farmed or have a lot of anti-heal. But you're best to try to avoid it. So you could get anti-heal to kill him, but I don't necessarily that's a direct counter because I think countering Warden is more about how to play against him. Another very important thing is that his binding word essentially roots you in place if you don't dash out of a certain circle within a certain time. So that's why a lot of Warden players, they rush the slowing hex item because they synergize really well together. It makes it much harder for you to escape that circle within time and you'll get immobilized. Which means that, you guessed it, reactive barrier is great against Warden. So yeah, Binding Word, once he gets increased cooldown reduction on it, it's gonna have a lower cooldown than your reactive barrier. So just make sure that you check the bottom left if your reactive barrier is actually up before you engage with Warden. Another thing to bear in mind is that his alchemical flask, alchemical flask, removes one stamina when it's upgraded. 
So these, these two abilities synergize very well together as Warden. And that is why that when you're laning against the Warden, you never want to be out of stamina because you'll definitely get rooted. This is one of those heroes where you gotta save as much stamina as possible so you can always do a jump dash or a dash and a roll or whatever or double jump to run out of his root or you will die. That's it. Um, another thing also when he runs you down like that, you can also buy metal skin. If you know that the warden is like very strong and has tons of bullet damage and you just can't seem to get away from him, buy metal skin. All right, then we have Wraith. This is the one hero where I buy reactive barrier every single game against. So the thing about Wraith is that her giant power spike comes when she hits 3000 souls. So what can you do if you're laning against Wraith? You need to plan ahead. Reactive barrier costs 1250 souls. So when you have around 2000 souls, for instance, start planning ahead and make sure that you have reactive barrier before the first time the Wraith is gonna ult you because Wraith has one of the biggest power spikes when she gets her ultimate, but she's not gonna kill you if you have reactive barrier. There's absolutely no way. You'll have a 400 bullet shield and a 200 spirit shield. So basically your spirit shield tanks all the damage from the ult, and then your bullet shield is gonna tank 400 bullet damage. Always buy reactive barrier against Wraith. Like I literally, there are no exceptions. Another thing is that she has a teleport. She tosses a card and then she teleports away. And you can stop her from doing that with Slowing Hex. So if you're struggling with catching a Wraith, consider also buying Slowing Hex or just a normal silence. Later into the game, sometimes it can be hard to keep Reactive Barrier because you need the Vitality items for more important slots. Then you could also consider buying Ethereal Shift. So what you would then do is you wait until you hear her cast in the ult and the projectile will chase after you and then you pop Ethereal Shift right before that projectile hits you. So that is another way of countering Wraith. In the laning stage, Wraith tosses her cards against you a lot. Try to always have some stamina saved up so you can dash out of the cards because the cards travel pretty slowly. So when they travel towards you, Try to just practice on dashing forward or sideways to avoid taking damage from those cards. And then last but not least, Yamato. Yamato has an extreme gap closing ability, Flying Strike. She has an extreme burst damage with Power Slash that she usually combos with Mystic Reverb to do even more. And she has a pretty strong lifesteal AoE in front of you that also lowers fire rate. The main thing about Yamato is that she will not do a lot of damage to you unless she's very close to you. The only exception is if she has like extreme amount of weapon items. So the, the rule when fighting against Yamato is usually to check does she have ult. Because if she has ult, she has a 5 second window where she can't get killed, her abilities charge faster, she has a lot of spirit and bullet resist and she's extremely annoying to deal with. So always check when she has her ult because her ult only has like a minute cooldown once you've gotten your items and she usually buys refresher as well meaning that silence cliff and curse is almost mandatory to deal with a really good yamato because with refresher she can actually be immune to dying for 13 seconds yep you heard me 13 seconds so Definitely make sure you check if she has ult and when she pops her ult, it can be a very good idea to practice your ability to kite. So kiting basically means that you try to run away, but not like run away as in just escape the fight, but run away just far enough for the ult to run out and then re-engage. So sometimes what I do with Bebop a lot when I fight Yamato, because her ult is going to dispel my bombs and they're not going to do damage and they're not going to give me stacks. So what I do when I fight a Yamato, I try to hook and then uppercut her, but I wait with my bomb. And that same goes for Viscous too. And then I wait for the ult to be cast or for the cube to be cast. And then I apply the bombs on after. So this does two things. It means that I will still get my bomb stacks for doing damage. And it means that I can now kite Yamato away and most likely she will be one health when the ult runs out and then you re-engage. Okay, that was it for today's 
guide on how to counter every hero in Deadlock. I hope this helped a lot. Feel free to mention tips that I may have forgotten in the comments down below. I'm happy to read them and maybe even make a revised version later. I do make all my guides on stream together with my community. So sometimes these kind of like free flowing guides might miss certain points. So feel free to always leave feedback. I really appreciate it and leave a comment if this helped you a lot. And don't forget to subscribe for more daily guides and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.